So this is where I wanted to, to focus the, uh, the reflection that we have today is this is probably the, the um, a resume of whatever is going on in our mind. And I think that for many, many years now, we started at the top. It's, it's always, it's normal, right, to start at the top. We have to aim, we have to focus on the soil itself. We have to work the reduced salt tillage, the cover crops, and improve rotation. This will lead us to labor saving, fuel savings, tillage saving, fertilization reduction, pesticide reduction. This will all come in with it. It's not the first year that we're doing reduced tillage that we drop the fertilization rate. But within five, six, seven years, we can drop it by 50%. We have to aim that. But first, we have to make it work. And then these things will be happening. Where you want to go? How are you going to get there? What do you need? What are maybe uh, some of the barriers that you have to overcome? Actually, we've been no-tilling for about 20 years. Um, so we're concerned with stratification of the um, fertilizer. So we did some soil tests and found there was a difference between the top, the very top, and then six inches down. So we're just wondering, A, is that, should we be concerned about that? And what are other people doing um, to get around that? He hasn't used commercial fertilizer for how many years? Uh, six. Six years. He has livestock manure and in a no-till system, and I like, I like the sound of that. I'd um, like to try more of that. And From last night, uh, the cover crops and the different, mixing the different species of cover crops together is something I uh, hadn't heard and hadn't thought of, and uh, I thought that sounded pretty intriguing as well. Yeah, my son will say to me, you've been doing this almost 35 years and you haven't got it figured out yet. And I, and I say, get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we seem to be where we were 30 or so years ago when you and Don and a bunch of others got together to start down a path. Like, how come we lost it? I think one of our biggest drags in the conversion is our machinery salesmen. I hear them all the time saying, oh God, you got to plow every three years, or that'll never work. I know somebody that did that and that never worked. Their livelihood is selling iron. Absolutely. I'm very glad to hear uh, that. This discussion this afternoon, uh, I can tell you, we, we are living the same thing in Quebec right now. And um, the feeling that I have most is that there's not many people now that we can rely on. Um, as Ian was saying, some of you, you see something, it gets you into action. Um, as I was putting on the reflection as well, we've got to get into the action and then we'll see the, the benefits of it. And so I think if we want to get into no-till, covered crops, conservation pitch, <coughs> as you said, there's too many people talking about that iron that's so good to us, too less people, too, not enough people that saying we've got to talk about earthworms, about roots, about microbes. And this is what we have to be aiming at. And I, I'm really glad that uh, we're aiming it in the same way. Thank you very much for uh, having me here. It was a great pleasure to meet all of you. What I took out of today was the dialogue. It's not very often that we get a chance to just sit and talk to the farmers. It was uh, inspiring to have uh, you know 17 farmers here to share their story about you know the interesting things and innovative things they're doing on their farms. Well, the one comment that was made today was that everybody in the room was very interested in no-till or conservation till. And the one question was, how do we engage in dialogue with people who don't necessarily believe in no-till or they practice their farm in a different way? So I'm putting it out there. I'd really like to know, from, hear from those people and to understand what, how can we engage with dialogue with you when you practice things on your farm in a different way.